So if you're watching this video, you're ready to set up TD Snap Motor Plan. Um, this might look very similar if you've ever set up TD Snap Core First, which is there um, within the same app. It's a, com it's a different vocabulary um, set, so kind of like a different app within this app. So there's different options. Um, so the first thing you really want to do, if possible, is set up a TD Snap account for the child. Usually I use the parent's email, um, but I use the child's name. Um, when I'm signing up for the account, the link to this is on the guide um, where this video is found. So you have a direct link to that. Make the child an account. I usually um, do a pretty intuitive password that I let the family know. And then once you do that, make sure that the family then, you remind the family um, to then go into their email and confirm um, the email from Toby Dynavox. You want to make sure to let them know it is an email from Toby Dynavox and that they just need to press confirm. It's like a new subscription kind of thing. They're going to ask if your email exists. So it's just going to be a quick um, press of the confirm button. Then you'll be able to log in. And so you won't see this when I set up the system just because I'm already logged in as the user. Um, but you will have a little pop up that says log in. Um, and in that case, you want to log in as the student with their specific parent's email and log in. You do not want to log in as yourself. You only log in as yourself on your own um, iPad. And so if you still have not set up the, um, the Toby Dynavox account online, totally okay. You can come back to this later and I will show you how to do that once we're set up in the app. So the first thing you want to do is press new user, get started. You name it after your, ch after your student. Um, every time you want to move to the next screen, you go to the bottom right hand corner where the little arrow is to move forward. You press needs text with symbol support. That's just great for our age group. You want to press touch, which is the access method, unless told otherwise by a member on your team. Um, usually the PT, OT would tell you this, or maybe even the SLP. Um, see, this is where it kind of gets a little bit wonky in the sense where you'll see that within this one app, there are four different options for vocabulary. Um, pod and gateway are ones that are in-app purchases that we really don't have access to. Um, as an ESD, but we have access to core first and motor plan. For this example, I'm doing motor plan. I have a completely different set of um, videos and a guide for the core first. Um, and since we're choosing motor plan, we go on to the next. We always want to choose motor plan 66. Um, it is the more robust version. Again, best practice is always going to be to choose the vocabulary with more words um, available. And if you need to, you can always mask or hide some words at first, um, but it is better than starting with the 30 and moving to the 66 because it moves the buttons around on the child, which makes it a lot harder to learn later on. So choose the 66 unless you know you have a team that really is invested and has stated very, very good reasons as to why you need the 30. And usually it's because it's a more complex communicator. Um, make sure that they always have a robust option. Then you get to choose the voice, which is kind of the fun part. Um, you can filter it to female, male, or feminine and masculine, and child, teen, adult. Um, for the child, female voice, or feminine voice, I love Ella. Um, for the male or masculine voice, I love Josh, um, Malik, and I think sometimes Kenny. I always use um, him occasionally. For this, I'm going to use Josh just for the sake of time, but feel free to listen to them and choose for yourself or have the child choose. It's always a fun time. When you click done, you're going to see the setup is complete. This is the full complete version. Before I forget, I'm going to go to the right hand corner to the little pencil with the gear behind it, just to show you if you need to log in after you have set up the app and, and you really um, got the family to confirm their email for their Toby Dynavox account. Make sure to go to the gear with the pencil in front of it and make sure to go to the bottom. You'll see button, page, page set, user, and system. You want to go to user and you'll see that I am logged in under my personal email. I had this account from before I worked here, so that's my personal information. 
um, and, and if you are logged out or if there's no person logged in, this is where you confirm you have logged in in the past or where you can log in in the future. So this is where you would put the email of the family, um, of the parent and, and log in with that password that you set. Once you're logged in, you'll be able to come right back here and see that you are logged in and you wanna make sure you are logged in. Um, if you um, look at this and see that you think the family, and usually it's the adults in the world, um, wanna have some of the vocabulary hidden for a little bit, usually um, hiding you know, some of the sentence building words for early communicators is okay early on. Um, making sure that you're unmasking and hiding things pretty consistently and um, pretty quickly. Um, I will show you that the hidden words are masked version I have created. It's a general version that I have created for um, any student really to use and you can continue on to my next video to personalize it a little bit more and hide or unhide words. Um, specific to that student. It would be almost impossible to create um, one that works for everyone. Um, if you want to see what that looks like, I can show you. Ignore this part because this is just me finding my vocabulary. So this is the hidden words version. You'll see that it has some stuff hidden on the page and it makes it a little bit more um, visually um, clear. Um, again, children, uh, you'll be surprised at how few children really need this. Sometimes I like to start with it to introduce it to a family um, and get them less overwhelmed. In my opinion, having families modeling and comfortable with trying a system is very important. And I'd rather have them use a system with some words hidden um, than never touch a system because they're overwhelmed by how many words are there. I do recommend really pushing toward having more and more words available because again, we never know, we can't assume what our um, students know and have um, to say just because they need time to explore the system and really know where words are. So make sure to move past this um, in the future, but you'll see in the near future, but you'll see that under describer descriptions, I try to have some of the more early action words or <laughs> adjectives or describing words in here, um, as well as when you go into um, more things, some of that stuff is hidden um, where you have mainly um, preschool type words available. But for food items, I really didn't hide anything just because um, this is very personalized for your student. So you're gonna wanna go in here and personalize and hide some things if needed specific to your um, student and this is something I might do on the second visit or third visit not right away just because you want to focus on the home page or some more of the like core words initially um, unless the family requests to do um, something else and try to at least have one core word along with some of the other words like a food word um, so like eat plus another you know for, plus a food word in there just in case um, just to ha help the student learn more than just nouns. Um, outside of that, I have other videos on how to personalize, set other things up. Um, this is just the general initial setup video.